quantum mechanics. Those two words alone may be enough to make you curl up into the fetal position, but believe me, you're not alone. In fact, even some of the scientists who helped develop quantum mechanical theory, including Albert Einstein and Erwin Schrodinger, hated it. Quantum mechanics describes the behavior of extremely small objects, such as subatomic particles, and while some of the technical aspects of quantum mechanics can be quite difficult to grasp, the main ideas of quantum mechanics aren't difficult to comprehend at all. They're just different from what we're used to. For instance, large everyday objects, like this pen, cannot teleport instantaneously from one place to another, like this, but electrons can and do teleport all the time. <laughs> also, consider shooting two bullets at a target. If those two bullets had the exact same properties and were shot in the exact same direction under the exact same conditions, then they would hit the exact same spot on the target. Electrons, however, will most likely land in different places when shot in the exact same direction under the exact same conditions. Huh? Furthermore, suppose you were trying to measure the position of an everyday object such as your pencil. In order to observe the pencil's position, light must hit the pencil, reflect off of it, and then reach your eyes. Because the pencil is relatively large, its position is virtually unaffected by the disturbance caused by the light. On the other hand, observing the position of an electron using light changes the electron's position which is what you were trying to measure in the first place. It's sort of like that thought experiment that asks, if a tree falls down in the forest and nobody is around to hear it, does it make a sound? The tree would behave the same regardless of whether someone is observing it or not, but the behavior of electrons is totally different depending on whether or not someone is observing them. And as if that's not crazy enough, imagine an everyday object that can exist as both a wave and a particle at the same time. For electrons and light, this is a reality at least until a better theory comes along. All right, so we've established that the extremely small world of subatomic particles is completely different from the macroscopic world that we observe with our naked eyes. But how is the quantum mechanical model any better than the models that came before it? Well, at this point, you probably know that metals tend to lose electrons and nonmetals tend to gain electrons, that calcium loses two electrons to form a two plus cation, fluorine gains one electron to form a one minus anion, and noble gases such as neon are perfectly happy with the number of electrons they have already. The quantum mechanical model explains why these phenomena occur. With the quantum mechanical model, we can explain things like the chemical and physical properties of the elements, the patterns of these properties that give us the arrangement of the elements that we see on the periodic table, and also the bonding behavior of atoms. And in the videos that follow, we are going to explore in great detail the current most commonly accepted model of the atom, which describes how electrons exist within atoms. We're also going to explore how these electrons account for the physical and chemical properties of the elements. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.